Hey guys, Ace Play here, and welcome back to another Stick War 2 Modding 101 tutorial video. If you guys are following in from last time, we have created a custom bomber unit, and that is the Poison Bomber. And this episode, we are going to learn how to actually spawn this guy in. Um, but, like, not always, just when we want to. So, previously, we just kind of did a little band-aid fix in the bomber update. We just made it so the bomber type is the poison bomber, so you will always be spawning poison bombers. And while that's all well and good, that's not exactly what we want, because these are custom units for a reason, right? We don't really want to be doing these guys all the time. So, insert the campaign controller. So, if we check it out here in the controllers folder, we have quite a few campaign controllers, and these basically uh, control all the not normal stuff that happened in a Stick War 2 game. So, for example, the tutorial level, having a whole bunch of, like, messages and arrows and stuff, depending on, like, where you are, and uh, the bomber level, like, spawning bombers and always making them attack. Uh, stuff like that is all being taken care of in the campaign controller, and you can weaponize these for your own really cool levels and stuff like that. So for now, uh, the controller we're going to be most interested in is uh, taking a look at the campaign bomber controller because, well, we kind of want to do things with our bombers. So let's see how Brock did it in 2012. Um, as you can see, he's importing a few things, uh, and this includes the units, not bomber. So without this piece of code right here, if you were to reference the bomber in the code without the import, the game would crash. So it is very important to have all of your imports whenever you are trying to do things. And if something's crashing, uh, see if you imported it first before uh, trying to fix it. So you can see some logic goes on in here and we don't really care too much. But what we do care about is this, the bomber. Uh, becoming a thing and the bomber being spawned on the enemy team. So we like most of this. I mean, of course, we want to spawn them on our team, but this is good information. So we're going to copy that stuff. And um, we are going to head into a controller that doesn't really have a whole lot going on. So we don't feel too bad when we completely destroy it. Um, I'll pick the campaign dead controller for now. Uh, it's the only thing it's really doing is checking if someone gets poisoned and it's telling you, hey, garrisoning exists. Um, so we're just going to use this one. So in the update function, um, well, a few things. First of all, you don't just want to do uh, this because that is not enough to uh, get things working. Everything's going to crash and it's just going to be an overall bad time. So first things first, guys, we're going to need to import our bomber. And uh, the easiest way to do that, if there's another import on the screen, is to just kind of copy most of that import and change the little last bit, because uh, these are basically, every dot is a folder in, in the actual directory. So you can actually traverse the folders and find what uh, scripts you need to import if you want to look through it manually. But all the units are in the units folder, so you can just kind of append the unit you want at the end. Uh, and that's how we can get access to bombers. So from there, we are going to also have this private variable called spawn bomber. And it's currently going to be set to false because we have not spawned our bomber. And the reason we're going to need this will become more apparent in a second. So down here, we're going to make a new variable. We'll just call it U1 for now. And uh, it's going to be a type bomber. And it's currently going to be null because that's just how things start out. Uh, null is basically nothing. Once we set the bomber to something, it'll become something. But for now, it's nothing, and we are perfectly okay with that. Now, we are going to want to do our little logic here. So first things first, uh, from the bomber code, we gathered that U1 is equal to bomber, game stream, you know, get the unit from the factory, and that's how we get ourselves a bomber. Now, the next thing is to turn this guy into a custom bomber. So now that he's a bomber, we just got to call our things that we set up in the code. So if you did it the way I did it, it'll be dot bomber type is equal to poison bomber. And that will be fine and dandy. So this will currently get a bomber, set that bomber. Now we got to spawn that bomber from the code from the bomber uh, campaign script. Once again, we got gamescreen.team.spawn. 
what we need to spawn and the game screen dot game, which uh, that's what's happening in the update. It's getting passed in like that. So that's how you get access to the actual game screen. And um, from there, we just got to set this dot spawned bomber equal to true because it is a private variable up here. So we're getting this specific one. And right now, if you were to run this code, uh, it would probably crash because you're just infinitely spawning bombers. Um, but there's just one last thing that I do is a little if statement. If this dot spawned bomber is equal to false, also known as uh, exclamation point, this dot spawned bomber for, you know, coding practice, then we're going to do the thing. And then we're going to set this that spawned bomber equal to true, so this will no longer keep firing forever. All right, so with all of this out of the way, the last thing we got to do is make it so all of our bombers aren't uh, becoming poison bombers automatically, and then we can compare and see if uh, what we did ended up working. So let's delete this problematic piece of code now, and uh, let's see if it works. Last thing we got to do, of course, is uh, actually set the campaign controller. Otherwise, nothing is going to happen. Uh, this is very <laughs> a very common mistake that can be made. So you made the changes to the thing, but since you never actually called it or did anything with it, uh, nothing ever happened. So let's head into here, um, our good old binary text file, and we're going to input campaign debts into the controller and we are a-okay with that. And then of course, do not forget to replace the binary. That is part two of things that people forget to do and then they wonder why their thing isn't working and it's well, you didn't change the binary, you silly willy. And with all of that stuff set up, if you did it all correctly, make sure there's no like this dot you want in here or something if you put the unit variable up here. You know, you wanna make sure everything is synced up or you're gonna get a lot of crashing and a lot of questions. But if everything is set up as such, you should get a favorable result. So if we head into our campaign match here, after changing our controller and all of that, we can see that we spawn a poison bomber here alongside our normal bombers. And this bomber just this bomber is just a normal guy, and all the other bombers after him will also be a normal guy. I forgot that Dendi Explosive costs 300 gold <laughs> in the campaign. But as you can see, it's spawning normal bombers. And then here is a real poison bomber. Um, I can't really manually detonate him because it costs 300 gold. But uh, if he were to detonate, then it would do the poison detonation. And then these normal guys, they're just going to do their thing and explode just like normal. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you can spawn custom units into your games with the campaign controllers. And if you want to spawn it for the enemy, it's very simple. You just do team.enemy team.spawn. And uh, you know, every team can refer to the enemy team. Uh, and every enemy team can refer to the team and you know all that jazz. So you should have no problem with getting them to spawn where you want them to. And uh, the campaign controllers are infinitely more powerful. This is just one small thing of many things you can do, but I'll probably cover these in a more in-depth video because there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do, like spawning in messages when certain conditions are met and stuff like that. There's just so much potential, and um, it is a pain in the ass to set up, which is why it has so much potential because you can literally mess with like every aspect of the game in these guys. There's so much you can do. Uh, I would recommend looking through all of Brock's previous campaign controllers as well as my uh, Chaos Mod ones and uh, just kind of learning for yourself how these work and how you can manipulate them and create cool shit. Code as always will be in the GitHub in the description. If you guys had trouble following you can see exactly what I did in my scripts and uh, use them. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what you guys want to see next. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.